Hello everyone, I'm Nerdy Fool, and welcome to I Was a Teenage Exo Colonist. So we'll be starting a new game. Uh, just so people are aware, although this game has a very cute design, there are content warnings. So it, this game is going to delve into more difficult topics. And so that's why they put content warnings, which I do appreciate. So if there are any of these topics that are going to cause problems uh i'm just giving you a warning now that they can show up uh ones that i know to watch out for is character death can happen some of the characters we are going to interact with as friends and family because this is a much more personal game than some of the ones we've been dealing with lately where we play a character and their interactions with their friends and family as they grow up on this colony that's struggling to survive and some people will die, including I know of one of our childhood friends is going to die. And I apologize for that spoiler. But I know that some people will struggle with that. And so I'm getting the warning out there early. Uh, yes, I know it's it's hard uh, because the game does a really good job of getting you close to these characters and making them feel real. Uh, as I play through this, I'm hoping for audience participation, so I've played through this game twice, and there is a mechanic where the game wants you to play through multiple playthroughs. It's not like Outer uh, Outer Wilds, Outer World, whichever is the time looping one, where it's 30 minutes. This is a long game where you play through the whole thing, but one playthrough will benefit the next playthrough and so on. So you get be better chances for a better end game if you play multiple times. So we'll see if there's a desire for me to go through again, then we'll get to experience that. Outer Wilds, that's the one. I knew it was in there somewhere. There's two games with basically the same name. Uh, so let's start. Wake up. Warning, this game deals with mature subjects and may not be suitable for all players. Please see our content warnings in the system menu for a detailed list of themes and events, which we've already done. You wake to chaos, a confusion of light, heat and smoke fire your head is pounding you must have hit it and blacked out but you aren't sure how you got here or what on Vertumna is happening there's something important you need to remember your stomach lurches as the floor crumbles beneath your feet then collapses your body aches and your eyes burn from the smoke a figure appears through the flames it's your friend. Your... friend? Wait, why can't you remember her name? She's gesturing and shouting at you, but all you hear is a ring in your ears. I'm gonna just climb out. Asking questions when I can't hear anything seems pointless. You try to stand up with one of your legs folds uselessly underneath you. It won't hold your weight. Your friend pulls you out of the rubble. She throws your arm over her shoulder and half drags you towards the door. Through it, you see a deep, eerie twilight, dark blue and cold against the heat of the fire around you. Glow season. Glowing eyes. You shake your head to clear your vision. Is that some kind of dog? Like from Earth? The creature howls and lunges, its jaws open. And that is how our game begins of I Was a Teenage Exocolonist. Yep, not a dog. You were born on the Stratospheric, Earth's first colony ship halfway through its 20-year voyage to a wormhole at the edge of the Sol system. Your parents run the hydroponic gardens, which makes fresh air and vegetables for the ship. Like the other colonists, they bravely chose to make this one-way journey to the uncharted planet Vertumna 4 in the hopes that they could escape Earth's troubles. They had you the old-fashioned way, merging their genes like they merged their cultures and traditions. They name you... We've got three default names. Sol Solanacea? I'm not going to choose it because I can't pronounce it. Solana or Solane. Or you can choose something else and type in your own choice. I'm just going to go with one of the defaults because I'm lazy. Uh, Selene. 
You are a bright-eyed child with an active imagination, sometimes too active, your mother says. Use the slides on the left, but choose pronouns and late teen appearances. They can be changed at any time. So for people that prefer having lots of character options, we have he, they, them, or she. And if you go into they, them, you can further customize everything. <laughs> so for me, I'm going to go with he, him. But I do appreciate a game that gives you this much choice on exactly how you want to choose your choices. Uh, also for appearance, we're going to go through stages. This game's going to last 10 years. And so with this default stage, we look the same regardless. But when we reach the late teen stages, it says then appearance will change and we will choose the masculine appearance. This looks like a slider, but really it's actually just three independent points that you choose from. So anywhere in this is considered masculine. We get that single appearance. But we'll choose the he option and the masculine option. You have vivid dreams of things you've never experienced. Dirt under your feet, skies overhead, endless jungles, and strange animals. You wonder if this is what Vertumno will be like. Every child on the stratospheric is given one genetic enhancement. By age six, you see the first signs of yours. So this is a question that I'll throw to chat. Do we want to have eagle eyes, extra fingers, an absorbent brain, super strength, calm temperament, or nothing at all? as our genetic enhancement that our parents chose for us. Absorbent fingers? No, extra fingers, I think, gives us a boost to creativity, if I'm remembering. Absorbent brain gives a bonus to reasoning. <laughs> Brains? <laughs> uh... We've got a vote for brains from Pseudonym and a vote for brains from Jorenda. So we will go Absorbent Brain. Professor Hal says kids learn fast because their brains are like sponges. But when people get older, they can't absorb as much new stuff. Not for you. You're always learning and your curiosity knows no end. Uh, so yeah, we got a 10 point bonus to reasoning. And then we will explain the card system when we get to it but there is a card system used for challenges whenever we make a decision. And so this card is going to give us bonuses on mental challenges. The other kids have trouble keeping up with you, but one tries. So with this one, we get to have the option to read through all of their information. So I will read through all of them and then chat can decide which one is going to be our best friend as we grow up. So we have Energetic and Loyal Anemone. Anemone is the most enthusiastic person you know. Your favorite memory is the time she taught you how to play zero-g sports ball after class. She never meant to get you into trouble, but somehow you always seem to find it together. Tough and Gentle Cal. Cal is a sweetheart, always ready to lend a hand or play a game. He and Tammy are just as inseparable, so it's almost like you have two best friends instead of just one. Cal teaches you how to take care of all the classroom plants. Your parents are very proud of both of you. Wait, that's not right. Um. Ah, bold and confident Mars. Mars is a natural leader. Whenever you're playing together, Mars is the one who comes up with all the ideas. She can be a little bossy, but that's part of her charm. She always organizes fun stuff for the kids after class. You're both founding members of the Fe Secret Fun Times Club. Wait, that's not right. Adventures and qu quiet and adventurous d dis dis. I don't know. Uh, unlike his studious twin sister, Tangent dis sits in the back of the classroom and doodles on his hollow palm. You bond while cracking jokes about weird diagrams in your textbook. His quiet nature and his morbid curiosity makes him somewhat of a loner, but at least he has a friend in you. Uh, studious and mature Tangent. Tangent sits right up front by the hollow projector and always has her hand in the air. She and her twin brother Dees drifted apart when she started genome treatment to make her body conform to her gender. Today, Tang is the girl you always knew she was, but her relationship with Dees is worse than ever. Wait, that's not right. And last, shy and sweet Tammy. Tammy's the kindest person you know. She idolizes Antecedent and is always following her around, helping her with the babies or learning how to cook. She has the best snacks at class, recess, and always shares. 
especially with you and Cal. She and Cal are just as close, so it's kind of like having two best friends. Yep, I thought you would like this game because uh, they, at least to my understanding, I am not the most up-to-date on non-binary LGB stuff, but this game seems to handle it well, to my knowledge, where it's in there, it's available as choices, but they don't throw it in your face, but they also don't make a token non-binary character who that's their whole character is just being non-binary. And so for people that are looking for that in a game, this game handles it quite well. So these are our six possible best friends. Who would you prefer based on those descriptions? Cal or Mars? Okay. Oh, and I'm hoping that I have fixed the issues I've been having with Twitch. I completely reformatted my entire computer and reinstalled everything. So, assuming it was a problem of my end, which it likely was, uh, that will hopefully solve that problem. Um, yeah, so it's not a lot to go off of, but at this point we are 10 years old or whatever. So we're close with kids, but choices later on, we'll get closer to some and uh, farther from others, maybe. Uh, yeah, reformatting a computer sucks, but sometimes you got to do it. It's been like four years since I've reformatted my machine, so I'm hoping this has solved that problem. But we'll see. So you're thinking Cal or Mars, do, does Pseudonym or Aurum Steel have a preference? We've got Tough and Gentle Cal, who's just a sweetheart guy, likes plants, friends with Tammy. Or Mars, who is a natural leader, a bit bossy, but kind. You're part of the Secret Fun Times Club. All right, well... <laughs> You're secretly Mars. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Cal. Out of those two, I think Cal is more fun. Uh, also, we get some bonuses with Tammy as well. So, <laughs> picking who dies, luckily no. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, Cal. So... Here we are. So... You'll see at the top, we've got these stats that we're getting little bonuses and drops to. So this is our stress meter. So we've gained 10 stress through whatever this event is. There's also a rebellion versus how loyal we are to the colony meter. Kudos, which is a sort of currency. They call it a reputation-based currency. It's designed rather than buying and selling goods. It's as you do things that are helpful to the colony, you get kudos and everyone can all the people's needs are taken care of and kudos are just sort of an extra thing trying to avoid capitalism and the dangers that creates particularly for a small colony uh so yeah you're 10 years old when the ship finally reaches the wormhole professor cal hal says it's like a doorway to another star system with the planet Bertumna 4 on the other side you run emergency drills for months to prepare when the day finally comes, it starts with a rumble, then things start to slide off the tables. You hurry to gather near the escape pods, just in case. 20 more stress. The emergency area is crowded with families. It's going to be fine, Selene. Your dad soothes. We'll be through the wormhole and down on the planet before you know it, just like we've practiced. Your mom gives him a sharp, worried look. So our father's name, as you can see here, is Geranium, and our mother is Falulu. Your mom gives him a sharp, worried look. 30 more stress. Red emergency lights switch on as a siren begins to sound somewhere distant in the ship. You try to breathe slowly, like you were taught, but you're very scared. You look out a porthole. The stars are gone. When you're frightened, you... So we do not have five toughness or five organizing to choose either of those options. If we'd chosen different people or potentially different uh, options for our 
genetic enhancement, we might have had those. As it is, we can only choose get in touch with your emotions. Oh, no problem, Orem. Uh, I'm hoping I don't end up with streaming problems, but if it is, I'll be glad you're here. Um, so we will get in touch with our emotions. You ball like a baby. It feels good. You aren't the only one. Nearby, your classmate Tammy has tears streaming down her cheeks. Mars is trying quietly to console her. She sighs as your crying makes Tammy wail even more loudly. Your dad puts his arm around you as you let it out. So that relieved 10 stress. We gain two friendship with Tammy and two friendship with Mars. And then a memory for stress cry. 20 more stress. You wait. The shaking builds. Then everything starts to get very weird. The hallway stretches, stretches, and you're stretching too. Your arm is impossibly long. Your head feels like it's slowly filling up like a balloon and contracting down to the size of an atom at the same time. Is this the wormhole? You hear the distant, ominous squeal of metal giving way as the ship shudders and lurches in slow motion. The weirdest part is a sense of deja vu. You're sure this has happened to you before, and you know, somehow, that everything is going to be okay. The shuddering reaches a crescendo. You hear an impossibly loud crunch, the feel and feel weightless for a few seconds before gravity slams you back against the wall head first. You black out. As you slip unconscious, you feel, you feel yourself twisted out of time. It's today, yesterday, and tomorrow all at once. And more than just one tomorrow, lots of them, different tomorrows. <laughs> Is this the wormhole? Nah, it was something else. <laughs> You find yourself in a place that you know from your dreams. Hilled fields, dramatic ridges, and a stranger, but also not a stranger? Grinning as she grabs your hand. Hurry up, she says. I'm not going to let you miss this. Distantly, you can feel the ship shaking has stopped and hear your parents' worried voices. Feeling safe, you slip further into the warm embrace of the stars. You drift. Gradually, your consciousness reforms. You wake up in the med bay. The med bay under, your pl under you plays a soft tone and an automatic voice speaks. Two weeks have elapsed. The patient's cranial injury has completed healing. They may now, now be safely discharged. So we are in a two week coma. As the fog lifts from your head, you realize something seems different about this room. It's so bright. You try to focus on the window. Something is definitely different. Sunlight, trees, ground. Uh, I think trees would be the most shocking. Instead of the familiar blackness of space, bright light from the twin blue and yellow suns is streaming through the windows. You peer out to see fields, glass-walled domes, and walls ringed by giant mushroom-like trees. There are construction materials everywhere and people walking around outside on the ground. You better get out there and join them. Either rush outside to start your new life, or cautiously step outside to start your new life. And this is what we have chosen through this character creation. Cal's our best friend, we have an absorbent brain, he options, and these are the three memories we gained. We can see all of our total memories that will be used so far are listed here. Things like giggling, first word, wondering, discovering, crawling, first steps, and then the new ones we gained. Gear, we don't currently have any. That will help us with the various challenges and then collectibles, which we also don't have. But we are going to rush out. We didn't just wake up from a two-week coma. We can just rush out. Now we get to the game's top-down section. Oh, Tammy says as you step out of the ship's quarters behind her. You're awake. Are you all better? You better go see your dad. She points southeast towards some geodesic domes. To walk, click on the ground, click on characters to talk to them, which I'll do. First, we'll talk to Tammy more. Tammy looks concerned. You slept for so long after you bumped your head, she says. I bet your parents were worried. Your dad is working over in geoponics near those domes. They're called greenhouses. I would go with you, but, um, well, this is as far as I've been from the ship since we landed. Tammy stammers, blushing. It's scary outside. Who else can we talk to before we talk to our dad? So we're in this small walled off community. They've got a couple of buildings. That's probably the greenhouse. And here is our ship, which 
appears to be crashed into the ground and possibly split in two. Selene, your dad gives you a big warm hug. I'm so happy you're finally awake. Dr. Instance thought it'd be best to keep you asleep while your noggin healed. Your mother and I thought you might sleep away the whole year, my snoozy little gooseberry. He checks your head and looks relieved. He was clearly very worried about you, but covers it with jokes and smiles. Uh, you love your dad or he's so embarrassing? We're a good kid. We're 10 years old. We love our dad. Welcome to Vertumna, he says, gesturing around you. You've never seen the stratospheric from the outside, except in pictures. The ship has been separated in two and parts taken off to form other colony buildings and a big wall around the colony. <clears throat> the alien jungle creeps right up to the wall. Only the geodesic greenhouses pass outside it, dotting their way up the hill. It's beautiful. How did you do this so fast? Or what's outside the walls? And yes, we had a great landing strategy. Uh, just like uh, Anakin Skywalker landing that one giant capital ship. Just crash and burn on the ground and hope for the best. But we did go through a wormhole and it seems that didn't turn out 100% to plan. Uh, it's beautiful. I'm glad you agree, he says. Your mother and I, we've been waiting a long time to see grass and trees again, even if they are purple. Oh, before I forget, he pulls a package out from under, out from his satchel and hands it to you. You blink and stare at it blankly. Don't you know what day it is? He asks. You honestly don't. You remind him that you've been asleep in medbay. Happy birthday, he shouts, wrapping you in a warm hug. Your birthday already? You feel a dizzying sense of deja vu. You stare hard at the rat package. You know what exactly what's in there. You remember it. No, you dreamed about this package some years ago on the ship. Inside will be a small medallion in the shape of a sun that your dad made by hand. We can open the package where we will get the sun medallion. Tell them we know what's in it. Or don't open the package. Tell him. All right, we are going to tell him we already know what's in the package before we open it. You describe the medallion and your dad discs as he hands you the package. Ah, uh, who ruined the surprise? Was it Seek? I'll bet it was Seek. They hate fun. He grins and adds, don't tell them I said that. You start to explain that nobody told you, but someone shouts your dad's name. Listen, I'm so sorry, Selene, he says, but I have to get back to work. There was an accident we landed and he stops himself. Don't worry, we're going to fix it, your mother and I. Professor Howell's expecting you in classes if you're feeling up to it, your dad says, pointing west to the engineering wing of the rear end of the bisected ship. Then he points to the large doors you came out of earlier, or you can relax in your quarters until you're feeling better. We'll talk later tonight, he says, and then he kisses the top of your head and ruffles your hair. Have a wonderful birthday, Selene. I love you. Love you too, dad. <laughs> Boo hiss, no classes. Uh, enter building, click on the door or the flag besides it and get close or press enter or another action button. Then choose an activity for the month to gain skills in advance. There are 13 months in a year and 10 years to the end of the game. You only have time to focus on a few things. So that's so we've got the 13 years or 13 months, 10 years that we're going to be playing this scenario before the game's over and we can potentially replay it again. Uh, that is trying to fill up our skills, uh, build up our relationships, work on the various jobs, etc. There's only so much time to do so much, which is why I'm hoping chat will determine what they would prefer to see. Meanwhile, talking to people doesn't take time or it doesn't take a whole month, so we will talk to everyone we can. You see Dis sitting on the ground beside some bushes. Is he hiding from somebody? He seems to be watching the gate in the wall to the south, where grown-ups are coming and going. Uh, kids aren't allowed past the, the walls, he says quietly, without looking up. They say there's nothing to be afraid of, but then why do we need the walls? You stare at the gate and have a sudden rush of memory, so strong you think you might faint. You imagine something crashing through the wall, something enormous and dark and wriggly. For years in space, you've had half-remembered nightmares of monsters, of your ship being destroyed, of sifting through the wreckage that used to be your home, trying to find something. Your dad always told you the dreams weren't real. Breaking you from your daydream, Dis whispers, I think there are monsters out there. Uh, alien biology, botany, xenobiology, yeah. I believe you. No, you don't, he says. You're being sarcastic, I can tell. Nobody believes me. He turns his back and ignores you. 
they're huge and wriggly and dangerous. We just lost two relationship with this. Stop making fun of me, this pounce. You're as bad as Mars. Luckily, in the case of Dis, I think we started out... Oh, we did have some points, so we did actually lose. I thought everyone started at zero besides our best friend. And so I was like, ah, losing two doesn't matter. Apparently it does. Uh, so Dis is more upset at us because he thinks we're making fun of him, but we have memories. We remember something dark, scary, and wriggly. Anemone. Hi, Selene. Anemone seems really at home here. She's rolling a sports ball around with her foot, making patterns in the weird blue snow. This stuff is different from snow on Earth, she tells you, because it isn't cold, and it's still neat. But it's still neat, and you can make stuff out of it. Your foggy head clears a little. Anemone is simple, is simple, physical, real. You always feel grounded near her. What are you making? Just snow spirals, she says. But earlier, me and Cal made a big snow pal. You missed it while you are sleeping in medbay. She smiles, her broad gap tooth smile at you. Now that you're awake, we can play. It's amusing... Because they portray kids fairly realistically, where adults would have been freaking out about you being in a coma for two weeks due to a cranial injury, versus kids are just like, ah, you were sleeping for a while, but glad you're up now. And they just move on. Uh, have you seen any monsters? Nope. Just some little bugs. The grown would say if there were monsters, right? She shrugs, then smiles reassuringly. Even if there were monsters, Chief Rat would beat them all up. So don't worry. My mom says we're safer here than we were in space. You both look over the wreckage of the stratospheric, the spaceship where you were born. And Emily's mom, antecedent, is probably right about that. Look what the wormhole did to your ship. Well, why aren't you in school? She smacks her forehead. School! I was wondering where everybody was. I guess I'm going to be late for humanities class. She doesn't look very worried to you. It's okay, she says. Professor Hal is chill. He won't mind. But we prob should probably get go now. She grins and starts running towards engineering. Hey, race you! No fair, she's getting a head start. Obviously not, she's just standing there. So we have four main buildings, uh, five main buildings. We've got the barracks, which also has the sports field. The garrison. A small team led by security chief Rhett was enough to keep the peace on the stratospheric. To stay busy, they also ran the exercise gym and sports ball courts. Here in Vertumna, the garrison has expanded fast. They're building a huge wall around the colony and have an outdoor firing range and a big covered dojo. And best of all, a regulation sized sports ball court. Sports ball is my favorite. Uh, let's see. So biology and botany. Botany probably is covered by biology. So that'll be here in the engineering wing. Yep. Hashtag sports ball. Uh, engineering. A low throbbing noise comes from the engine room, where which provides power to the colony. Other corridors lead off to the teaching labs and the med bay. You know the route to your classroom well, but the rest of the wing is off limits to children. Congruence, the ship's onboard AI, beams down at you from a nearby hollow screen. Don't forget to study hard, Selene. So we can choose if we want to go here to study life sciences, which will raise our biology, reasoning, give us a friendship with tangent, and 15 stress, or study humanities, which gives creativity, persuasion, friendship with tangent, and 15 stress. We'll leave for the moment and keep exploring. This is the living quarters. The ship's quarters are where everyone sleeps, eats, and hangs out. The private bedrooms are small. You share one with your parents, so colonists spend most of their time in the big common area. There's a lounge and cafeteria and a creche where all the little kids and babies are raised communally. Uh, yeah, so our stress is currently sitting at 50 still. Uh, so the way the game works is we can get our stress all the way to 100, and at that point we can no longer do activities that give stress. So then we have to come to, say, here the lounge, where if we relaxed in the lounge, we would lose that 100 stress and gain a friendship with Tammy and also forget a memory. So we're going to be gaining new memories that are hopefully better and more powerful. And so the goal is then to go to our old memories that are pretty trash and remove them by resting. So we'll get to that later. We don't need to worry about stress at the current moment because we still have 50 more stress that we can take before we snap or something. So then we get to Command. Command is a warren of long hallways with doors off to the tiny nondescript offices. Everyone you pass seems to be hurrying off to something important. The end of one hallway opens into the supply depot, which works as both a requisition office and general store. 
Beyond it are cavernous warehouses stacked high with supplies from Earth, now being gradually unpacked and distributed. The notice board. Food, colony food shortfall, negative 100%. That's probably a bad thing. Uh, colony security rating, evaluating. Upcoming event, we'll be hosting our first annual, annual Virtunalia Festival during the second month of dust. Chief Administrator Seek. Notice, take precautions outside the colony boundaries. Xenofauna have been sighted in the area. Survey teams are investigating. Chief Surveyor Tonin. Current Council Administration, Governor Uticott, Command. Chief Administrator Seek. Security Chief Rhett. Chief Engineer Instance. Chief Cultivator Flulu, that's our mother. Chief Steward Antecedent. And Chief Surveyor Melatonin. And we will leave. And lastly, we have geoponics or yeah, geoponics, the greenhouses, the greenhouses of different biomes inside growing plants from Earth that might belong in a desert jungle or temperate forest. Some are so delicate, you can you have to spray off any germs in an airlock before you can enter. The seasonal garden outside is dotted with blue nobodies, little flowers of what looks like wriggling creatures stuck inside each one. A sign explains it's a decoy meant to attract some kind of flying predator to come pollinate the flower. <laughs> 